The 13th World Basketball Championships continue. This is the big game the Opals have been waiting for. They've had a three-day break, but now they have arrived at the Max Schmeling Stadium, ready to take on Spain, this largely unknown Spanish outfit. And a win here will take them into the semi-finals, the medal round, and that's exactly what they've come to Berlin to do, to win a medal, become the first Australian team to do so. There's the 15 who've or rather the 12 players, down to number 15, who've contributed largely to Australia's success so far. It's been a terrific effort by all of them, and in particular, Bob Turner, by Michelle Griffiths in that last game. She has really struck form. Well, without question, I think, in fact, the whole group of uh, Opals have really struck form, and this is just such a big game. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm I, looking forward to this with uh, intensity because this is a game where we really need to get over uh, this hurdle of getting into that final four of course if we lose this game we go into the five to eight bracket so Spain largely an unknown quantity as you said earlier Mike because we haven't played them since 1990 so uh, Australia coming into this game a little bit of nerves I'm sure but if they just stick to their game plan and stick to what they've done for the last uh, six games being undefeated they should be fine. Max Schmeling Stadium. There's an Aussie supporter. Yeah, there's a few out too, so that's good. The Germans not making it through to the quarterfinals, which hasn't helped the crowds. Mr. Sudek, the referee from Slovakia. But nonetheless, by the time you get to this stage of the competition, there's always great interest in what's happening there. And I think everyone at the World Championships have been looking forward to this encounter between Spain and Australia. They haven't played each other in eight years. And it has really made it difficult for Tom Maher in terms of preparing for this game. Going into the championships, he virtually earmarked a quarter-final against either China or Japan. Well, one of the keys to, uh, to Australia is the preparation, of course, in a World Championship event like this. You see the coach of uh, Spain, and there, of course, is Tom Marr from uh, Australia. Probably a little bit anxious because he's uh, he knows he hasn't played these, uh, these, uh, this country. And what he normally does in getting ready for a, a basketball game is you see the starting five for Spain there. Number 11 is the point guard, Alvaro. And she's uh, a very tough competitor. Grandi, number four. The other guard, Anula, number six. Alonzo, number eight. And uh, Pons, number 12. So a very tough starting five for, uh, for Spain. But in particular, number 11, the guard, Alvaro, is the player to watch. Well, they've done pretty well so far, and so have the Opals. As we look at their starting five, and they're going in with Sandy Brondello. Now, it'll be interesting to see if indeed she is in the starting five. But that's the way it's listed. Brondello, Timms, Porter, Whittle and Griffiths. Well, if it is Sandy Brondello, Brondello and Timms both played against this point guard, Alvaro, and uh, th they know her very well. They know her game. It looks like Sandy's sitting on the bench there, so uh, it could very well be that she's in the starting lineup. As we've said throughout this tournament, though, with Australia, it doesn't matter about all 12 players. Any one of them can start, and any one of them can hold their heads up high in that starting group. Well, this is make or break time for the Opals. Carla Porter going out there. She has been in fantastic form right throughout these championships. The Spanish coach there, Mr. Coloma. Manuela Coloma, big game for the Spaniards as well. And the point is, the Opals generally during big tournaments have had a game that's let them down. Well, they've got so this far, and really, they can't afford to have a letdown from now on because it's cutthroat from here on. Well, it's sudden death, that's right. When you get to this stage of the tournament, you uh, you lose, you go into a different division. Now, if they should get by this, at least then uh, tomorrow they play the semifinal against Russia or Cuba, and then we go from there. So the quarterfinals underway. First hands on the ball to Whittle as she gets it out to Timms. Now Porter. And the Opals will be looking for a good start here. They've found themselves in difficult positions in some earlier games, down by 15 against the Germans. We're able to come back, Whittle. Nice play. There's Griffiths, who couldn't quite make it. She'll get it a second time. Well, Michelle Timms kept that ball alive. She got the offensive tap back to Gr Michelle Griffiths, who put the second of those easy buckets away. So forward go the Spaniards for the first time. 
I mentioned something of a surprise packet the way they've played. Number four there, Grande. And up goes Alonso. I think a travel called in there in, inside the key. Jenny Whittle, the big six foot six inch center from Australia, just making her change her uh, movement a little bit and the travel called. So Australia ball, the first turnover to Australia. Porter, Whittle. The hook shot, the Jenny Whittle special, and it went nowhere. <laughs> well, it wasn't too, too special there. And there's Brondello. Interesting that Brondello, they've probably picked the tactics in one, Bob, the, the fact that she has had experience against the uh, point guard, Valero. Well, and of course, the Slovakian coach said it's amazing that someone like Brondello, who's one of the best players in Europe, only gets five to ten minutes with the Australian team. She would start on any European team. So here she is for Australia. She started before in past years, but uh, very confident start from Sandy Brondello, taking to the bat, the ball, the basket, very tough. Number 11 is the point guard that we've been speaking about. She is the chief playmaker for them. And the foul from behind on Michelle Griffiths as uh, Alvaro feeding the ball into uh, the big center from Spain. Michelle Griffiths got caught behind. Tom Marr there, the team's up 4-0. At least they got a start where he feels a little bit more, uh, can breathe a little bit, knowing he's not down 15 like he was to Germany. Ball. Brought into play Grande. Alvaro got it out. Driving hard. That's Alonso. <laughs> In fact, uh, Anula it is. Nice basket. And another at the other end for the Opals. You've got a fair bit of support here, the Opals. Grande. Up by four after a couple of minutes of play. The Opals unbeaten in the tournament today. Haven't really looked like getting beaten. And even against the Cubans, when rather the uh, Brazilians. It was a one-point game, but... The second half, Australia in the front, in front all the way. Well, I think you talked about the support here for the Opals. I was talking to an official from Japan, and he said, uh, Australia, my second favorite team after Japan, and I like those body suits. <laughs> well, the Germans had them as well. It didn't do them much good. The rebound to Griffiths, to Timms. Away go the Opals. Just inside for Timms. He makes a long one. Michelle Timms coming down off the break. Hits a shot like this confidently against Alvaro, the point guard from Spain. Bang. Two points to Michelle Timms. And when she's hitting shots like that, you know that Michelle Timms has her sight glued in. Well, she makes the three-point play anyway. She took that extra step to get inside the shooting line. Still, she ended up with three. So a nice little break this for the Opals. And Tom Ma was worried about the Opals coming out slowly. Driving hard, Alvaro. Nice screen out there by Australia to get the ball in possession. And here comes Timms. Timms, oh, didn't shoot. She lost it. Alvaro takes it away quickly. She's got plenty of speed. Loses it, though. Brondello to Timms. Long under the basket. Griffiths back, intended for Timms. Well, a little bit anxious there from uh, Australia, trying to push a little bit too hard to Michelle Timms. But Australia still retains possession. Three Porter to Griffiths, back to Porter. Now Timms. Nice play. And Porter just dwelled on it, made the basket anyway. Well, a great back screen there by Michelle Griffiths to free Carla Porter off the give and go. You see number four, the guard from uh, Spain got caught behind the screen, had no option but to foul, and the strength of Carla Porter puts the ball down. Tasmanian from way back, Carla Porter. She left there as uh, a late teenager to go to the Institute of Sport, and now based in Adelaide, in great form. Ten-point break to the Opals. Oh, almost losing it. Alvaro. Number six there is Anula. It's great defense by the Australians, just hounding every play phase. And they come up with the rebound as well, through Timms on the floor. Rachel Spawn out there now. Brondello, 
finds Timms. Nice. <laughs> nice little pass, but it didn't quite find Jenny Whittle. Away go the Spaniards, Anula. And Grande can't make it either. Gee, they're not uh, converting their baskets, the Spaniards. Mind you, they're not having much time to get a clear shot at it either. Well, the pressure is up, and uh, you can tell Spain's coming down almost rushed on every shot as uh, the Spanish coach takes a timeout and sits his players down and tries to regroup them because they're coming down anxious on their shots, thinking to themselves that uh, if we don't get it away quick, we're not going to get uh, a clean look at it. So a little bit anxious moments by Spain. I, I, I remember Tom Marr yesterday making the comment after the USA uh, game where they qualified for the semifinals, saying that of the four semi, four quarter finals, everybody was saying the Australian-Spain game was going to be the most or the closest game. And uh, as it's turned out in the opening minutes here, it looks like Australia is out to uh, make sure that's not the case. Tom Maher also made the point that the uh, favourites in the quarterfinals, in yesterday's case, the United States and also Brazil, had made very slow starts. And he was concerned that the Opals might do likewise. Well, they have really got themselves focused for this. Top well, That's great. Great to see the people enjoying the game. That's Michelle Griffith's husband on the right there. So, And you reckon she's proud of that? He's definitely in the full mode. I think he was wearing the bodysuit the other day. As the Spaniards work it around. Back it goes to Alvaro. She'll have a lot of court time. She'll like to get some of those uh, buckets, though. Well, what uh, Tom said yesterday, he was worried about the backcourt of, uh, of Spain, and that's probably why Sandy Brondello gets the starting nod uh, alongside Michelle Timms. But he felt inside they had a much more dominant play with uh, Whittle, Sporn, Griffiths, and Porter, as you see. Just too much size inside for Carla Porter. Number four there, that's twice. She has no option but just to try and fall on Carl Carla Porter. Griffiths in the way. Oh, Alvaro's clever, though. She gets through two of them. Back it goes. The way now of Alonso. Well, they needed that and a few more, the Spaniards. The Boomers bolting out of the gates. And still out by 10 after five minutes. Brondello. Incidentally, Brondello had only three minutes of court time in the last match against Brazil. But such as uh, the depth of talent the Opals enjoy, Tom Mar figures it's horses for courses. In this case, she's gone from three minutes on court for the entire match to a spot in the starting five. Well, of course, Joe Hill and uh, Alison Cook did not play in the game against Brazil, and yet uh, Joe, Joe Hill was a starting guard for, uh, for Australia in the first three games. So, you know, he's got full confidence in all 12 players, and the players know that, which is critical. Long from Timms, and Porter says thank you. Oh, they're making it look easy. Well, Australia has definitely recognized this mismatch. Again, you look at Carla Porter, the opposition just not up to it. Surprising. Tom Maher was quite concerned when he found out that Spain was the fourth team in the other group and Australia's opponent in the quarterfinals. By virtue of their results and also the unknown quality about them. Well, this Spanish team only went down to the USA by nine points uh, in the rounds, in the, in the eighth rounds. So uh, there's a foul there to uh, Michelle Griffiths. That's her second personal foul. And uh, when they came close to the USA, everybody went, Spain is for real. And uh, they've had kind of a mixed bag as they came into this quarterfinal scenario, winning three and losing three. Well, they've lost their last two. One of those very tight against the United States, as you mentioned, and the other tight against Lithuania. Just goes to show in basketball. There's a fine line between success and failure. Alonso at the free throw line. And of course, Michelle Tim said after the uh, after the corner final setups that she would much rather prefer to play Spain than Lithuania. So uh, Lithuania, of course, yesterday going down to the USA. So Tim's and the coach perhaps uh, with different opinions, but I think uh, at the moment Tim's assessment is looking okay.
because the Spaniards struggling in the opening moments of nice. the match. Please. Spawn. Lovely work. Griffiths dishing it out to Spawn. Well, great hands there. Michelle Griffiths dumps it off to Rachel Spawn, who just comes into the game. That's the first substitution now in the game, six minutes in. So uh, Tom Marr going with that starting five because they gave him a good, a good start. Alonso losing it. Away go the Opals again. Griffiths steadying it down. Timms. Back she goes to Griffiths. And a travel. And just the whole flow of the game in these first six minutes is really just attack at both ends of the court. Spain is not allowed to settle down at the offensive end. And then they have to convert back to defense quickly because Australia is coming at them. Side from Anula. <laughs> That's the second time Anula has come down and uh, hit that jumper from the uh, bottom corner. Griffiths, Porter. I wonder what Lauren Jackson will do uh, in this match today. She's done everything right in the tournament so far. Awaits a chance. Spawn, nicely done. And Porter <laughs> takes two. Well, Spain is so confused with the defense, the uh, offensive play of Australia that they're just failing to match up. Nice play there. The Opals out by 12. Brondello. It's one of the few that have missed so far by Australia. Well, Brondello gets the steal at the other end and takes it coast to coast. Very confident start from Sandy Brondello. Look at this. She'll have another go and misses again. Doesn't help the percentages. Strong body work. That was uh, Valdemaro. Well, obviously, Coach Tom Morris said to Sandy Brondello, get out there and mix it up. I want you aggressive at the offensive end, which she has shown, taking a couple of jump shots and a couple of drives to the basket. And in that way, even if she doesn't convert, it puts the heat on the Spanish defense. Nula. She's been prominent in uh, the start of this match. Still out there. And so has the tall player there in Alonso. Jackson's in, gets her first rebound, first touch of the ball. It's taken eight minutes for Tom Ma to introduce Lauren Jackson. There's the second touch, and for a moment I thought she may have thought about three. Spawn. Goes for two. And Valdemaro takes it away for Spain. Very impressive performance to date by Australia. Early days, though. By the same token, once Australia gets in front, they rarely relinquish a big lead. It's when they trail. Oh, down goes Tims. They still make the basket. Well, Anula there just stays with it. Finds yourself open, not gets rid of the defense. Doesn't matter how you do it, right, Mike, as long as you get rid of it. Oh, yeah. As long as the ref doesn't mind. Tom Ma did mind. Didn't have a say in it, though. Oh. Well, Robin Ma looking for the pass out wide. It came off some legs. I think the Australians will take it from the side. That's Manuela Colomo and his assistant. Christy Harrower, number 10, into the play for the first time. So too Annie Lafleur, who passed it out to Mars. So this rotation continues. Harrower, Spawn. In fact, he's got five players out there now who didn't start. So there's a complete rotation, and that just leaves uh, Alison Cook and Joe Hill after, what, 10 minutes of play who haven't uh, been on court. Well, he's back to his uh, system that he believes in and, and has obviously done uh, well in this tournament so far. And we haven't dropped a beat as far as uh, intensity, talent, standard, or anything is concerned. Harrow up. Now Spawn goes out to Robin Ma. Lafleur. She's often been starting in recent games, Annie Lafleur. Yeah. Jackson, Ooh. not quite drawing a foul anyway. Well, so much quicker than Alonso, the uh, center from uh, Spain. You could see once they got isolated on that baseline, Lauren Jackson's eyes lit up as uh, she has been told by Coach Tom Marr, when you get the ball isolated on some other center who's slow, go at it. And uh, this time Lauren Jackson 
Can't quite convert the shot, but gets two from the line. And she probably will take both. The first, and so easy for the second. Yeah, I reckon Wake the up. body suits the go. <laughs> Looks like it's boring to the, uh, the Australian spectator. 22-10, not all that close, but when you're in front, it's exciting anyway. And that's the case for the Opals at the moment. Valdemaro. She'll go outside now. And takes only the rim. Lafleur and Harrower in the backcourt. And just watching the flow of the game again, you look at the Australian defence at this end and really well coached Tom Morris done just to get his team very in tune with how they want to play and what he wants. Mark goes out to Harrower. Jackson. Nice pass. Lovely pass to Ma who can't quite convert. Lauren Jackson, that big six foot six inch frame, long arms. Just can look at the whole court. And if you pressure her up, as Alonzo was trying to do, she can also uh, attack the basket. So very difficult to guard. Number 12 is Pons. Off she goes. And there's Tom Ma. I don't know about Tom Ma when he gets the tongue out on the under the top lip, curled around. I think he's reasonably happy with the way things are going. <laughs> Lauren Jackson, he should be pleased with her. Well, once again, Lauren Jackson's been in the game, what, two minutes, three minutes. This is her fifth point. Fourth point, she's not able to convert that free throw, but as far as points per minute, she has been exceptional. Just about at the midway part of that first half. Australia up by 14. Valdemaro, it's a nice move under the basket. Spawn. Lafleur over wide, Ma. Work it around well, the Opals. Have such confidence in each other. They know each other's game so well. Jackson again. But <laughs> Lauren Jackson, it's like a, a mop. That ball just comes to her, automatic. The other end, the bucket's hard to come, for, come by, and you can see under the basket then, three in the green and gold, just no room to move. Could be a bit of a shoulder strain suffered by Nula. And, you know, the, uh, the point guard, Alvaro, from uh, Spain, who was going to be such a big threat, the Australian defence has really done a good job of taking her out of the game simply by pressuring the backcourt, double teaming as soon as she gets across half court, she has to get rid of the basketball and uh, that takes her out of the flow and out of the game and does not let her control the action like the uh, Spanish coach would like. And can't make the second, Annie Lafleur. But still tremendous scoreline for Australia. I know basketball fans around the country will be very excited at what they're seeing. Jackson, in fact, Griffiths it was with a rebound. Now to Ma. Spawn. Lafleur. She can go back to Griffiths now. Harrower. Jackson being rested by Tom Ma, so she was out there for only about three or four minutes. Got the points. Go and have a break. And once again, they go to their patented low 1 4 for Annie Lafleur. Oh. Offensive foul on that occasion, but whenever they can't get anything out of their offensive set, the, the actual motion, the last eight seconds of the 30-second uh, clock, they go low 1-4, give the ball to Annie Lafleur, let her penetrate, go one-on-one, -on -one and uh, enforce the defense. Valdemaro again. Oh, interception was good, but it's going to be the Spanish ball, Christy Harrower. Well, Tigerish. The, the Australian Gold Mark Opals are just a delight to watch because every play phase is important. Offensively, defensively, they are just at you. Look at this. Well, she gets the shot up, doesn't get it in, but Spain come up with a rebound. Number 13 is Figueroa. Well, as you see, even when they put the rebound down, they got an offensive board. And it's all of a sudden a double team. Robin Barr right on the spot. Ties the ball up. So Figaro goes up with Ma. Ma doesn't have the height, but 
The whistle goes Spain's way. She got hands on it, but I think she had another hand on her opponent. Alvaro. There's Figaro with a shot. Doesn't go, and Australia. With that rebound, Michelle Griffiths out the Harrower. Whittle. Have a look at the basket. Ma. Back it goes to Ma inside. And taken away now. Turnover. All the way down the court. And they had two chances. And once again, Mike, the, the, the constant pressure that the Australians exert on you of converting down to offense. You saw Christy Harrow push the ball. Uh, there you get Spain coming down on their fast break. The pressure's still there as uh, Alonso comes over the back and it'll be Australia ball. But during the course of a 40-minute game, by the time it gets down to the last 10, 15 minutes, a team with only five or six players is just going to be exhausted at this pace. And that, well, I don't know. You talk about the improvement of the Opals. They lose the ball this time, but there's all sorts of reasons for it. There's... I suppose the maturing of those uh, middle rung players to become outstanding players, like uh, in particular Carla Porter, those types of players, and also the youngsters coming through. But I think as much as anything, it's the numbers that Tom Ma has there. That 12 player rotation is. Goes the shot and doesn't go in again. And Allison Cook's on the court for the first time, but it's also the way he has approached the coaching of this team and that he's got full confidence of the players and vice versa, and he shows it by playing them. But it's just a style of play. It's a relentless attack at both ends of the court, and uh, you better be up to it. And uh, about the only team that I've seen in this tournament so far uh, that can contend with it is probably Russia or the USA. And even the USA yesterday, it's going to be interesting if we can get through to that gold medal game because uh, the USA can match us for, uh, for talent, but I don't know about intensity. Who knows, the USA may not get there. They have to beat Brazil in a semi-final. Would be favored to do so, though. And of course, Alvaro, under the basket, Sebrian. Well, of course, the Spanish coach is trying to find somebody to combat the Australians. That's a nice, aggressive move there by uh, Spain. She's a tall girl. Quite a bit of international experience. Well, there haven't been too many buckets for the Spaniards. But she's very competent from the free throw line. Needed those and more. Big break to the Boomers. Outside Whittle. Porter the rebound. Can't make two. Spain try to make Australia pay for those two misses. Alvaro. This is Valero. In she goes to Cyprian. And they can get a bonus here. Well, Spain twice in a row now has gone inside against Jenny Whittle. They picked up the foul against Whittle both times. So they found at least something that uh, that is working. Trying to go inside as Jenny Whittle picks up her second personal foul. She'll come out of the game. Again, the revolving door of uh, the Australian bench. No problem. Michelle Timms came in, played the first six minutes, has not been back on the court since. Uh, she's on there now, as a matter of fact. So the, the run of uh, the last ten minutes has really been without Michelle Timms, or the last eight minutes. And Porter's ball, I think she forgot that Michelle Timms is only 165 centimetres. The pass just a little high. Maybe she thought Whittle was still there. Tim's on the far side there, but uh, she's got a taller play to guard than Sebrian, who does well, does very well, the big play. Well, nice play. That's three play plays in a row that has gone inside. And she has responded. Nice move inside. And Spawn, six and a half minutes before the half, and Spain have got a little run on here. They've scored the last seven, and that's exactly what they needed to do, down by 17. And now... Taking it back to uh, 
within 12. And really the key to that, as you see, uh, Carla Porter, 11 points so far. But the key to that has been that when they get the ball inside Spain, they do have an, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to score. They were isolated one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, Jenny Whittle picks up a couple of fouls inside. Let's them back in. Alvaro hasn't quite had the influence we anticipated in the first half. Started very well, but like most of the Spaniards, just blown off the court in the first 10 minutes by Australia. Outside, Valdemiro. Goes in, well short that shot. Just Pons. And what, well taken there by Porter. Look out. Jenny Whittle, in fact, the Rachel Spawn back on, says thanks very much. Well, that's the Adelaide Lightning combination, Porter to Spawn inside, good fast break back bucket. Alvaro, marching back to 15 now. Well, pretty good defense there by Australia. Michelle Griffiths got caught behind, Carla Porter came across to help and picks up the foul. But Spain obviously seeing a couple of inside baskets. That's now where they're trying to go and getting very aggressive at getting it inside and their, their power forward and center. Farragut is uh, trying hard to get themselves open. One from two for Farragut. And that little exchange, Tim's. Over five minutes remaining in the half. Griffiths! Ooh, big three for Michelle Griffiths. Well, that's a momentum breaker. Comes down, nails the three. Can't, takes it back out to 17. Can't pick out a husband in the stands there, but I reckon he had a beer. One to celebrate. Outside, Alvaro. She needed a three then to answer that of Griffiths. Didn't drop. Tims. Just, uh, the odd unanswered three really makes a big difference to the scoreline. Spawn kept in play well by Griffiths. Now Tims. He's out for all money, but you get it back to Tims and the shot clock restarts. Spawn to Tims again. Rather uh, Porter involved in that play. Then it's Spawn ultimately. Well, Australia aggressive back at trying. Rachel Sporn tough, gets the bump. The bucket's not allowed. The contact occurred before the shot, so Rachel Sporn will go to the line for two with Spain in the uh, foul count, in the penalty count. Rachel Spawn turned 30 years of age on the first day of the championships. Lost a spot in the starting five at the same time, but I don't think she'd be too perturbed about this because she's part of a very successful Opals team who may yet go all the way. Outside, big basket. Number five, Sanchez has only just come on. Well, they've been looking for her for a while, and Sanchez, uh, a new player for Spain, Australia gives her a very good look, gets her feet planted. Porter not quite taking it, eyes off the ball. Down the court they go. Outside again, Sanchez. Griffiths to Mata, to Tims. This is Joe Hill now in the game as well, so all 12 players have hit the court. And that's not, that wasn't the case against Brazil. And I just wonder if that's an indication that Tom uh, believes, even at this early stage, that the Australians should have Spain's measure. He certainly knew the game against Brazil would in all likelihood go right down to the wire. He wanted, he gave Tims a lot of court time there, more than in any other match. So it was a danger game. And I just wonder, even before half time, if he feels that we can cope with this mob. 
let's give everyone a run. Well, I think that the style of play so far would give him every indication that he's very comfortable with what's going on. He knows his defensive pressure is very tough, and Spain is not handling it well. And uh, they're struggling to score and contain Australia at the same time. So at both ends of the core, he knows he's got strengths that uh, Spain just doesn't have the answer to at the moment. And uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to figure it out by the time 40 minutes are up. So a timeout and a little break for the Opals. Tom Ma with some words of encouragement, some words of advice, but I think he'd be pretty pleased with the way things are going. Let's in a moment see if we can pick up the message from the Australian yeah, like coach. Some unbelievably fine defense to come into the last stretch and get off some cheapies and, and make him go and have time feeling, oh, well, okay, we settle down. That's a lie. Don't let him take that defense. So you don't let him, you don't let him get off the cheap. Okay? Okay? Now, offensively, don't go out of your way back and back swing things. Just do it in the context of the play. You see a mismatch, you see a back cut, you want to take that. Now, we're not going to the short corners at all. Right? And also, when you do go to the short corner, you cut. You've got to put a lid on it, but it's not right. Well, a good time out there by Tom Marr. He, he defensively, he wants to just maintain, as his comments were, unbelievably good defense there from us. Keep the pressure up, make him go into the locker room thinking twice about it. At the offensive end, he's seen a couple of times where people have maybe gone out of the offensive set, out of the offensive flow, going individual, and uh, he wants to do it within the context of what the framework of the offensive set uh, plays. So. Don't go out of it. The offense will give you what you want. Just play with it. Porter making them both. And the other little message in there, he said no cheapies before half time. This little run home. In other words, keep the pressure right on the Spaniards and give them effectively nothing to, uh, no heart going into the break. He wants the Opals to bury them in the last couple of minutes. I think he wants uh, Spain to go into the locker room thinking five to eight's not a bad way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not talking about the score line there, are you? <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, off fingers, it's going to be a, an Australian ball taken by Jackson. So two and a half minutes remaining in this half. And it's a very good message from Tom Ma, really. Oh, try to convert a lead. With play like that from Lauren Jackson, so say a teen type lead, a mid teens, up to a mid 20s if you can, rather than the other way. But once again, Lauren Jackson comes in, replaces Carla Porter, who's got 13 first half points, and scores right off the bat. Hill with the rebound to Timms. Now Hill again works her way inside. Nice pass. Off hands, it's going to be a Robin Ma ball. Well, Joe Hill of uh, a week ago would have taken that shot, would have been confident enough. Lauren Jackson is. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> well, there was nobody there with her, so it was easy in the end, but quick hands. And now that lead I mentioned from teens is up into the 20s, and it's two more from Joe Hill. 23-point break for the Opals. Just making Spain look uh, very, very ordinary, the Australian Goldmark Opals. Very intense. Adam, the whole play phase. And she gets her own rebound. From outside, Valero. Tims works it away. Back to Valero. Hard to believe. This is the team that Tom Mark was so concerned about. He ordered videos. Harry Graff had to go and get videos of their previous two matches. Tim's Jackson couldn't quite control it. Well, obviously the videotapes work. They, uh, they've spent a lot of time looking at Spain. And uh, Tom Marr did say after uh, a lot of work with the coaching staff that he had the game plan now and he felt comfortable and confident that they could come into this game. Uh, but yesterday, even talking to him, he, he had a lot of hopefulies into his uh, conversation. I think hopefully is now uh, out the window. It's, uh, yes, the game plan will work. Well, that's 10 points now to Lauren Jackson in this first half. So Lauren Jackson has played about seven, eight minutes, 10 points. Instant impact. Inside the last 60 seconds of the half and 
Australia up by 25. What a scoreline this is. In goes uh, Joe Hill. As Sanchez put the ball up. And Joe Hill there trying to get the charge a little bit out of position. Another half step, she would have had the call, but uh, that's a sign also of a player who's still just trying to work herself back into this rotation. Another point for Sanchez. So making both of them. The Naples, I suppose they're feeling a bit greedy. Let's make it a half century by the break. Jackson. Griffiths. Now Michelle Timms wants to settle it down. 23 up. Let's make it an even 25. Marta Timms. Well, they can... Milk the seconds down in this half, but they'll certainly have to give the ball back regardless. So the shot's got to come up right about now. And again, just taking their time, using the clock. Sandy Brondello draws the foul out of the defense. So uh, things working well from the Australians' point of view, obviously. And this is a team that is full of confidence based on uh, an extremely high work ethic. Rondello making both the starting five, but she's had a fair old break now. Down goes uh, Valaro. Timms. She might shoot it from here. Their confidence is high. Oh, she gave it a fair old chance. It looked like she almost wanted to do that. She lined it up rather than push it off the court. A little bit of a smile on Michelle Timms' face. But Michelle Timms is an extreme competitor. And she'll uh, look at this. Just kind of, I got it. No worries. A little bit of a 80-foot hook shot. <laughs> draws a little bit of iron. Well, I reckon she was thinking of Annie Lafleur when she put that shot up. Because Lafleur, you'll remember, in an earlier game, just trying to think it wasn't Brazil I think it may have been Congo where she had one beyond the halfway right on the buzzer and she thought well why not uh, have a go at it anyway and she put it straight into the basket for one of the biggest threes you'll ever see well, so there it is at half time Australia by 23 48 to 25 this in a quarter final and really the key stat there right now is uh, 8 for 30 from the uh, field 27 percent from Spain and, uh, and that's just through constant pressure. One of nine for the three-point line. They're, they're having so much trouble getting the ball inside that they're forced to take long threes, and they're not hitting them at the moment. So uh, one of nine for the three-point line. For Australia, 57% from the field. They're just in a nice group. The rest of the stats, 10 assists to Australia, are, are fairly even. Nine turnovers to Australia. Would not be pleased uh, with uh, Tom Mark. So half time here, what a half this has been for the Opals. They will take a break, we'll take a break, and then back with the second half in just a moment. That's the half time score line here at the Max Schmeling Stadium in Berlin. And a tremendous first half by the Opals, 48 to 25, a lead of 23. And I think that would be beyond Tom Maher's wildest dreams at the start of this match. Well, all the pundits, as he said yesterday, that said this was going to be the closest match, uh, I think they're. Obviously, the Australians got fired up, and to show that this is not going to be a close match, they've come out with total aggression in those first 20 minutes. Who are these pundits anyway, Bob? I can't believe it. So the second half is underway, and picked up by Hanula it was. This is Valero. So what could be the message from the Spanish coach, Mr. Coloma, in the halftime break? Not a lot they can do, you would think, as... First pass with the second half goes to Sabrian. Well, I think obviously what one of the things he said is have some patience and work it inside and let's take our chances in there because that's where they really had a little bit of success in the first half. Porter 
Well, that was uh, almost unopposed. Well, for once, uh, too, Australia has some size over uh, and athleticism over an opposition uh, at this level. And uh, that's just a lot of development of the players over the last couple of years. And once again, a turnover to Spain. So the Australian defense has been pretty, pretty relentless at, at making it tough for Spain to work their offense. But at the same time, it's been a, a, a situation where Spain uh, has number 11, their point guard, Alvaro, so they can handle the pressure a lot, lot better, but they're not able to score. We spoke about the size of their opponents, and uh, for so many years, that's where Australia struggled. They've got two at 196, so two very tall players there, and Alonso and also Sabrian. And one at 191, Garcia. Other than that, though, those three very talls, it falls away quite quickly. Well, Sabrian with the foul there on Jenny Whittle, and Jenny tried to make a move, forced the contact, and just kept at it. And uh, I think fortunate to get the call, but she'll go to the line for two. The tallest player in the Australian side. And one of the big improvers as well. Well, again, only 24 years of age. She was on the world championship gold medalist at the under-20 level five years ago, along with Carla Porter and uh, a number of other of these Opals. Driving in hard, and Nula. Whittle with a rebound to Timms. And away they go again, the Opals. Nothing will stop them today. I'd say their confidence would be sky high at the moment. Tim's long, straight through the fingertips of uh, Griffiths. We've seen that move backfire probably three or four times today. Well, it's just a back screen to try and free the player on the cross-court pass, but uh, that time the pass a little errant, and also uh, Michelle Griffiths probably not ready. Up goes Sabrian. Tim's working it away. It's Brondello. Something happening behind it. Well, Carla and Porter trying screen. to set a screen on the uh, on the turnout from transition and gets a little aggressive and uh, decks one of Spain's players underneath. So uh, picked up for the foul as the coach. He's had the same look on his face for the last 25 minutes. Wasn't so bad at the start when they were all square. He's probably thinking, well, let's get this over with so I can start worrying about who we play in the five to eight playoff. Pons couldn't quite make it. Griffiths, Timms, and Porter. Griffiths with it, but she was well guarded. Jenny Whittle from outside. It fell short. Pons. Oh, up goes the shot from Anula. And Timms can go all the way. She'll Jenny the Whittle line. with the uh, nice block shot inside. Good penetration by Spain, but here you go, Michelle Timms on the fast break. Good defensive play by Spain. Brondello. From outside, I would have thought. Didn't matter in the end, though, from Porter. Maybe feet on the line. Well, the Australians clearly would be still focused on knocking over Spain, but I'm sure Tom Maher's thoughts are starting to turn towards his semi-final opponent and i can tell you that will be russia in she goes now she's quite prominent in the second half here ponds and still can't make it well she's had several opportunities alvaro tims the two-point guards together Neither one at the end, and it was Anula. Well, Spain well, well and truly on the back foot through their whole sequence there. They're not confident at doing anything. Jenny Whittle turns down the three. She missed the last one. Brondello. There we go. Into Whittle. Now out to Tims. Griffiths. 
Not dropping. In fact, nowhere near. So Sanchez runs it down the court. Ooh, down by 25, she draws the foul against Timms. Well, Michelle Timms thought she stripped the ball clean. As the spectators are a bit blasé with this uh, big lead to Australia. And the flags still flying in some sort of hope. But Spain really with their backs to the wall at the moment. Griffiths. Once again, the Australian defense, Sandy Brondello, locks them from that spot. Yeah, she has been a tough worker. She made the play at the defensive end and then finishes at the offensive end with two. Five minutes gone in the second half. This match has been dominated by the Opals from the outset. Still Pons misses. Now, Spain shot only 27% in the first half. Very poor percentage. The Opals at 57. And I'd reckon Spain are doing nothing at the moment to increase that 27%. Really has let them down. And a lot of that is because the, uh, the Australian defence has done nothing to let up. And uh, they're still getting rust shots. Whereas Australia comes down off transition. That time, Carla Porter gets a, a good open 12-footer, gets fouled, and she'll go to the line. But Australia's shot selection has been uh, very, very good with open looks and mixed in with a lot of transition, easy buckets, and, uh, and a lot of inside play. Carla Porter, 19 points in this game so far. One of the most consistent players for, uh, for Australia. From outside, Sanchez. They get the rebound though as well. Needed that. Another missed opportunity though, Lafleur. Called into the action. Porter, back to Lafleur. Well, there's still a long way to go in this match, but it's hard to see a lead of this magnitude slipping. And not just the lead, but the way the Opals are going about their game. Spawn. I wonder at what stage Tom Ma will start to focus his attention on the semi-finals and if indeed there is anything he would do in the last five minutes maybe to uh, change the game plan at all to suit matches coming up. Well I think knowing Tom he'll, he'll start thinking about Russia in about 12 minutes or 15 minutes when this game is over and, uh, and go from there but Sandy Bondello again Extremely confident, the Australian defense forcing the turnover and Sandy Brondello once again converting it into points. But uh, I think Tom Marr will be thinking, no, now let's enjoy this. He, he, there's no, no such thing as clearing the bench because he's been doing that since game one of this tournament. So uh, he knows his players are going to be well rested coming into the, uh, the big encounter with Russia tomorrow. So the jump ball, Robin Maher involved in this, uh, along with Anula. Goes the Spaniards way, they're fighting over it. Hard to get a possession of the ball, Alvaro. And Sandy Brondello, well, she is doing everything in her power to try to convince Tom Maher that despite differing matchups, despite different styles of game, She's worth a spot in the starting five and certainly more than three minutes of court time that she had against Brazil. Down go the Spaniards. And she hooks it back into play, but straight to Whittle on the Lafleur. The Opals with all the answers from just outside Brondello. <laughs> and Spawn. Well, it fell into a lap. And once again, Spain gets the rebound, the defensive board, but pressure comes right on. They get another turnover and Australia converts it. 33 point margin. This back to 30 now. Huge three. Sanchez. Well, Sanchez, when she gets her feet planted, that's her second three of this game. First came when she'd been out there just a matter of minutes, seconds even. And she found a range straight away. And Ball again, an offensive way. foul from uh, Jenny Whittle. 
trying to set the screen or from Rachel Sporn, sorry. Trying to set the screen to free one of the players on the offside. And the big crowd here uh, trying to do something to get this thing reveled up. Trying to start a wave, but uh, I think the baseline's a little bit free of people. It might stop. I think the Mexican wave hasn't translated very well into German. They're trying to do a Spanish wave, not a Mexican wave. And they're down 30. Lauren Jackson's out there now. Lafleur, nowhere to go. Back to Brondello, who drives hard, loops it up, and draws the foul against Sanchez. Well, great to see Sandy Brondello respond the way she has in this game. Uh, a quarterfinal match, she gets the starting nod, and she really has come out aggressive and takes the ball to the basket hard there. But she's looking for her shot. She's working tirelessly at the defensive end. And this matchup with Spain having two smaller guards is ideal for the Tim's uh, Brondello combination. So substitution being called. And I suppose the Spanish coaching staff will be very disappointed with this outcome which seems certain to go against their side, even with uh, about 12 minutes remaining. But it's all about improving at international level, and they were eighth at Oz 94, didn't make the Olympics. So as they're in, they'll go into the fifth through eighth playoffs. That uh, can be a pretty clear goal. We were in that same group last time at Oz 94. Let's make sure we're nearer five than eight this time. That in itself would be a reasonable result. It sure would for uh, for Spain to, to keep improving. Three-pointer, Lauren Jackson. She's not a basketball uh, player out there. Pons doing well, taking it all the way down the court. Ma to Lafleur. Straight through the hands of Rachel Spawn. And Annie Lafleur taking the ball a little bit too far, not really having many options to go with. But it, once again, a, a whole different five from the starting position, and we're only uh, eight and a half minutes into this second half, so the rotation continues from Coach Tom Marr. Number eight, Alonso. Just one of those very tall players I spoke about at 196. Her sixth World Championships. And she has the chance of winning a medal now. It all started for Robin Ma back in 1979, probably before she met her husband, Tom. And here she is still going at 38 years of age and looking for the ultimate. Griffiths! Or was that Cook out there? It may even be Alison Cook out on court, I think. Yes, Cook into the action from outside now. Lovely three, Alvaro. Alvaro came into this game with a lot of wraps, and I must admit the defense of uh, Australia has really bottled her up. But on that occasion, he gets a good look and nails the three. Pons right back on a foul with to Carla Porter. And again, we talk so often uh, during the day about uh, at, the, at our nighttime show with Trish Fallon. Trish Fallon was the starting. Uh, small forward for Australia. Carla Porter saying, you better work hard because uh, I don't want to give it up. Well, Porter was the star, certainly, of the opening round, the first three matches. She uh, was shooting 14 and 15 points in just about every outing. And not just the points she was scoring, it was the rebounds. Everything she was doing on court, she looked terrific. Had a couple of quiet matches, and now she's right back into the frame. Jackson Damar, Lafleur, quick hands. Cook goes right across, finds that aforementioned Porter. Now Ma. Porter again. Good shoot. Drawing the foul, but missing the basket by a long way. And once again, you see uh, Pons with the foul. Just size and athleticism, Carla Porter just too tough to handle inside. 
And Carla knows that so when she gets the ball she's going aggressive to the basket. Carla Porter, one of several Australian players off to play in the WNBA. She'll be going to the new team, Detroit Shock. And unusual for her to miss two free throws. Through goes Alvaro. What have you made of Alvaro's game? She goes for three. Well, the defense of Australia has really just done a great job of not letting her get into the flow of the game. Uh, she hasn't been able to create. You can tell she has very good skills. Annie LaFleur for three. Very good skills, Alvaro, but she's not really allowed to get into the flow of what she wants to do. So when you restrict that, she is a limited player. Inside the last 10 minutes, that was a tiny three from LaFleur. She'd probably be disappointed in that after the ginormous one she hit a few days ago. Pass going astray, ending up with Lauren Jackson. Down they go again. Well, once this again, is... if you looked at the other end of the floor, every time Spain moves the ball, the rotation of Australia's defense just does not allow a good pass or an easy pass to get open. And uh, Spain probably not used to that. And every time there's a turnover, where's Australia? Down the other end of the floor very quick. Shooting at 73% from the charity strip. Well, 0 for 3 in the last 3 that she's taken. 0 for 4 now. I just get the feeling that with this lead out to 30, the intensity has dropped off a little with the Opals. Understandable. They have another big game coming up in 24 hours time, the semi-final. Ma would, would be disappointed to see uh, the form drop away, I'm sure. But... Uh, it's not unexpected when a lead is out to, to this magnitude. I think that's why he's now made a couple of more subs. He's got Carla Porter out of there. Obviously, her uh, her focus has changed a little bit. See Lauren Jackson with another rebound. So Allison Cook is in. Joe Hill is in. And uh, Jenny Whittle back in. So Whittle and Lauren Jackson double post. Travel, another turnover to Australia. The one factor in this game, I must admit, is that Australia had nine turnovers in the first half. They normally have nine turnovers for a game. So uh, a little bit errant with the way they're playing at the uh, in taking care of the basketball. I think that often comes when you realize that you have control of your opposition very early. Long three, good three. Need a few more. Sanchez, who, the, her third. Well, Sanchez has really found an open area. Whenever she has, uh, she's delivered. And Lafleur wants another. Oh, it was in, and then it changed its mind. Jackson pulled away when making the shot. She'll go to the line. It's those turnovers sometimes. Uh, when a team comes out firing and blows a team away, their opponents away in the first uh, 10 minutes or so. I guess the confidence goes sky high, but uh, at the same time, they tend to play a little like millionaires, and uh, Coach wouldn't mind some of that. Well, Lauren Jackson converts the first to two, and uh, that last play was an interesting scenario where she got the offensive rebound, went up, and she converts the second, got fouled, but uh, got fouled aggressively, but still had the strength to get the shot up onto the, uh, onto the basket. So uh, at only 17, she has a lot more strength than she uh, shows. Just inside, Jenny Whittle, the Australians out rebounding Spain in the first half, 19 to 13, continuing that trend in the second, Lafleur. Well, I think Spain is getting tired of just the pressure. It's uh, at the offensive end, Any Lafleur finds the lane, the defense slow to get down and close it, and Andy picks up the foul, but Australia really doing as they want, and of course, as we've said so often, it's not like Tom Marr can now clear his bench and uh, and take it easy on Spain and rest for tomorrow because he's been clearing his bench since uh, the opening game of this tournament. You mean he can't bring Carrie Graff on? <laughs> I'm sure Carrie Graff would like to have a go. <laughs> Get into the uh, real excitement of it all. Under eight minutes to go now. This lead, a mammoth one for Australia. They led well at half time. 
At that time, it's a 23-point break. 31 at the moment from outside. Iguala. Lafleur. Jackson. Oh, that was really well. Took the time. She wasn't going to be rushed about that. Set herself and made it easy as you like. Well, I think maybe Tom Mar, you talked about tactics earlier, thinking of to Russia. She, he has made a move to put Jackson and Whittle on together, which hasn't happened a whole lot in this tournament. And uh, so, therefore, the two two centers are actually trying to play and match the size of the Russians. Allison Cook had like three. Can't take the rebound. Sanchez beats her to it. Good interception from Joe Hill, but surely it's going to be a uh, Spanish ball. Hill thought it may have gone her way for a moment. You know, they've shot to that. I, I don't know if that's a freeze frame or a new shot each time, but the coaching staff has never <laughs> changed their look. I think they might be mesmerized by this. Well, it's amazing, really. As I mentioned, Spain beat Argentina by around 20. They convincingly disposed of uh, China by 17. Lost to Russia by only two. Only two against Russia. And Russia is just about the form team of the tournament. They walloped Japan. Then lost to the United States by only nine. 79 to 68 against the United States. And then to Lithuania by three. So, two very narrow losses in the last two games. Pushed them down to fourth. They could have had a much better draw. Well, that's uh, again why Tom was a little perplexed that people thought this quarterfinal would be a, a very tight game. He looked at the game stats and the, and the tapes and said, look, I think we can match them in these areas as Joe Hill takes the ball to the aggressively to the basket. And uh, you know, now you're looking at a scenario where uh, Australia is ready for that semi-final game against Russia. They know that Spain only uh, lost to them by a couple. Uh, so tactically and uh, talent-wise, Australia should be in good shape. Six and a half minutes to go. No. And the little the steal from little Christy Harawa. Well, they don't come much smaller than Christy Harrower, but the hearts don't come much bigger. Well, when Christy Harrower got signed in the, by the WNBA Phoenix uh, Mercury, a lot of people said, Christy Harrower, why is she going to the WNBA? But she has done an exceptional job in this tournament. And not only from a defensive point of view, she's aggressive. The one area that she needs to work on is her, her outside shooting to become a deadly threat. And once she does that, and she's only 23 years of age, she will be Michelle Tins too. I don't know about you dyeing her hair. Well, she's going to, she's going to uh, Phoenix as well, isn't she? With Tins, she is going to uh, Phoenix and uh, along with um, Michelle Griffiths. Michelle Griffiths, yeah. And uh, Porter is going to Detroit Shock with Spawn. So the Australians getting plenty of opportunities there. Harawa. Does well, just maintains a balance long enough to Hill. Takes the ball again. Tom Ma with the tongue. Gives it a fair old workout. Hill. No, not quite. Australian ball, though. Well, it's good to see Joe Hill, though. The last two times she's touched the ball, she's uh, attacked the basket. And uh, she's trying hard to work herself back into this. Uh, Rotation back into a confident position. Cook just lobs it out to Harrower. She finds Spawn. Cook. And the pass just misses the Spanish hands. And from outside, Christy Harrower. Well, she's worked on it very quickly. We talked about that only 30 seconds ago and now gets an open three, so uh, she's hurt us. Bob, you're a marvel. <laughs> and look at all the Opals, four of them, waiting for the rebound. Such a well-drilled side. Cook long to spawn. Another two. Oh, this is like a training run for the Opals. 
Well, the Australian gold mark ovals are really making uh, Spain look like second rate, uh, a, a second rate nation. And a lot of it, again, is because the tactics of Australia is just nonstop. 79 plays, 43. Who would have expected this? Who were those pundits who suggested this would be the close one? I think there's a lot of media people, as a matter of fact, Mike, that uh, probably were looking at this, but the, the coaches were thinking a little different. I don't know what this coach was thinking. Well, I think he's pretty pleased at the moment. The well, of course, the money in comes tomorrow now. This is the semi-final time, and USA, Brazil, Russia, and uh, Australia have uh, have now all qualified. So tomorrow morning on eight, at 8.30, you'll be able to see Australia playing Russia. 9 o'clock, I'm sorry. You'll be able to see Australia play Russia. And uh, that's getting down to money time. And then, of course, USA will play Brazil. And we'll have both those games here at, uh, from 9 o'clock. So uh, great basketball action as we've seen uh, throughout this tournament. But getting down to the real class of this tournament, the top four teams, all in semifinal action. Nice basket there for Spain. Yeah, no, no, They'll look yeah, to get their confidence yeah. up in the closing minutes of this match in the fifth through eight uh, playoffs. Down by 32 at the moment. They spawn. Well, blocked and then makes it a second time or gets the shot up a second time I'm really looking forward to obviously the opening swing can't wait for that match when they take on Russia at stake a, a spot in the gold medal playoff but the other semi-final should be an absolute ripper as well the United States against Brazil that is a replay of the Olympic final won by the Americans it's the Olympic champions up against the reigning world champions that's going to be a great match. And, of course, Brazil likes to razzle-dazzle. The USA likes to play confidently. Uh, Australia just likes to play. <laughs> full, full stop. But it's going to be a great match, both of those semifinals tomorrow. Things have quietened down in the crowd a little. I'm not quite sure what that is she has around her neck, but... Uh, I Obviously. think it's a Dagwood dog, actually. <laughs> fresh from the Royal Easter Show. Let's put it this Maybe way. it wasn't it's so a, fresh. It looks like it was comforting. Jackson. Now Brondello. Joe Hill, her confidence is rising. She forced that jump ball a moment ago. She really is giving it everything. And I've just felt over the last few minutes that she's been in the play a lot more. That shot will do wonders. And it's interesting, I wonder what uh, the rest of Australia is thinking, uh, whether there's not a lot of talent around the world or, or what. But uh, if you just watch the game, Australia is just tenacious in the way they have attacked this game in every game in this tournament. And a lot of the nations aren't ready for this type of, of pressure. And uh, Australia has come out with a different style of play than any other nation. And, uh, They'll be 7-0 after the first seven games of this tournament. So obviously, people around the world will be start starting to look at uh, Coach Tom Marr and how did he get his team to do this? The aggression continues for the Opals. Of course, they were so close to a medal at Oz 94, beaten in that bronze medal playoff by the Americans. Only by five, though, 195. So that really was a huge stepping stone for them. They took the next step at Atlanta when they won the bronze medal against the Ukraine. And maybe the next step is gold or silver here. Well, I think from an Australian point of view, they went away to this tournament chasing gold, and uh, that's really what they're confidently predicting they can get. So uh, Lauren Jackson there fighting for possession, jump ball. Jackson against Sabrian. Ma, Harawa. Back she goes to Ma. Hill. Nice ball to Robin Ma. 
They had plenty of air, and uh, the Spaniards with the arms under the basket. Oh, Valderamo around the corner. And on the end of it, Cebrian. Well, good play of uh, a phase of play from uh, Spain. They moved the ball down, got it off transition once again into attack. And Christy Harrow with a rebound. Should be pleased with that stat. Hill. It's a huge scoreline, a dominant performance by the Opals from the opening tip off. And Sandy Brondello was there at the start. She's still there now and making very good baskets. She's a fine shooter inside the last two minutes. And there's no stopping the Opals. Spain just blown off the court. They tried to stay in it with some uh, superb outside shooting by Sanchez. Hasn't been enough of it though. Robin Ma. Legs pumping down the court. Harrower from outside. She already has one three. Can't get another. Wheeler doing well. <laughs> well shoot for the Wheeler. pass. Brondello around the corner stop. She'll get that. Once again, bringing the ball down. It, uh, the backcourt pressure was so strong, Aguila just wanted to get rid of it. Sandy Brondella was there, and bang. And again, it doesn't drop there. Shooting percentage has been abysmal tonight. And really, that's uh, credit to the Australians who have defended so well. Well, if you put it into cricket terms, the Spain has been on the back foot since the opening seconds when Australia scored first. And uh, the, the pressure some 38 and a half minutes later is no different than the opening minute. And that's uh, that's the credit to the Australian Opals as to how they are attack, uh, attacking their opponents at this stage. The semi-final draw has come through and the first semi-final tomorrow at nine o'clock will be the Americans against Brazil. One to look forward to. The second at 10.30. Australia against Russia and all of that tomorrow on Sports Australia 1. That's Channel 12. Well, that of course, there'll be the evening show on uh, Sports Australia 2, Channel 14 with Amanda tomorrow. And that's just uh, a great feast of, uh, of basketball, those four nations. As the clock counts down, the crowd gets into it. They're appreciative of this uh, great performance by Australia in the quarterfinal match. The last play of the match. Maybe a three-pointer on the buzzer. Yes. Sanchez. I think it was. She's the only one who's been shooting them for Spain. But the Opals have dominated here. They have crunched the Spaniards and they are into the medal round. Australia, a huge win over Spain. And now they take on Russia in the semi-finals. Well, you got to give a thumbs up to Australia. A great performance, 87 to 54, in a game that people thought would be very close. You see the Spanish coach there with his arm around Coach Tom Marr. He'd been sitting there for 40 minutes saying, how did they do this? And uh, he might want to get Tom over to Spain to run a clinic uh, maybe after the tournament. Well, a terrific performance by the Opals. They are jubilant. They know they're two wins away from a gold medal now. Things are looking great. And the youngster still starring, young Lauren Jackson. Great performance by the Opals into the semis. Sports Australia production on your Commonwealth Games Network.